Hello, it is Saturday, May 6th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Saturday crossword today, which means we may well be in for the most difficult crossword of the week. I, we'll see what that means, because yesterday's puzzle was quite difficult, and uh, based on the comments in the Daily Solve Discord chat server and the comments on the video, that was true for many of you, uh, certainly so, uh, as well as myself. So, We'll see. We'll see if today stops that. In any case, this potentially very difficult puzzle has been brought to us by Jenny Montague, Alan Blunder, Mitchell Turek, and as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support in bringing us this series, supporting this channel. I very much appreciate it. Thank you so much for your contributions. You do keep this whole thing going, and it means a lot to me. So thank you for that. Um, and you can also uh, become a patron yourself if you aren't one. Uh, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field. There you can get all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. That includes yesterday's mini puzzle pseudo speed solve weekly uh, video. And today it will be posted soon after this video goes live. Um, the final boss words spring themeless league competition puzzle. So uh, that will be up very, very soon, possibly even by the time you see this. And uh, I found it pretty tricky. So speaking of tricky crosswords, that was another one that gave me a challenge. And uh, so yes, you can get all of those if you're a patron of any sort. And then if you're a benefactor, you can get the daily solve. Let's check the crosses mug. All right, do subscribe to the YouTube channel if you've not gotten around to that. Maybe tell a friend if you think you know somebody who might enjoy this series. And there's also the Daily Solve Discord chat server. You can join that from a link in the description field as well. Okay, I, I don't think I'm going to have time for the extra, for the clues from yesterday's puzzle at the end of today's video. But in lieu of that, I did want to try and hopefully fairly quickly um, do my best to address a question from Rosie Fay, which I know is something that people wonder very often. Uh, she says, your earlier videos give the impression that U.S. crosswords have a strict rule that a punny clue must end in a question mark. Um, and I think the the implied, she says, so it isn't so strict after all, and the implied question is why do uh, clues involving wordplay sometimes have a question mark and sometimes not? So one thing I would say to that is I don't think I've, at least I haven't intended to give the impression that clues involving punnery or wordplay must involve a question mark, but rather that if they do, that's what's being implied. So the, the must is going in the other direction. A clue with a question mark, except in extraordinary cases where it is literally a question being formed in the clue. Um, a question mark means that there's wordplay afoot. But I wanted to go into that in slightly more depth because some people have, um, I think I probably pointed out yesterday, there was quite a lot of what felt like punnery and wordplay and misdirection in the cluing, and much of it was not uh, indicated with question marks. So why is that? I took a look at some of the clues in yesterday's puzzle, and I think there's a distinction that you <laughs> you may or may not agree with with what I've identified as a distinction, but I think it's 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 useful. So I'll look at I, let's look at four clues from yesterday's puzzle. There was one that was take a broad view question mark. So take a broad view question mark, and the answer was pan. And my interpretation of this was. It's a broad view in a film, say. The camera is panning. And the question mark clues us in that there's something punny. We need to look beyond the ordinary reading of take a broad view with a question mark. Um, but there was another clue, for instance, popular TikTok character. And the answer was hashtag. And that feels like a bit of wordplay as well, in the sense that we think popular TikTok char character, you think it will be a, a fictional character or a host or something, a person. Um, because when you read that uh, that clue, you're very intentionally led to think of character in the sense of a person. Um, but the answer was hashtag. So they mean a character that you would type on a keyboard. That didn't have a question mark. So why is that? My answer to that, my interpretation of this, is that take a broad view is in itself, in its entirety, a phrase that idiomatically in English specifically has a meaning that refers to thinking about things in an open-minded way. It it very specifically is is all unto itself a phrase that any, I think, native English speaker would understand in that manner. Popular TikTok character is 
nudging you towards thinking about character in that way. But popular TikTok character, it's just a it's just a combination of words. It's not a phrase unto itself. We don't have sort of idiomatic phrase, popular TikTok character that with those specific words in that specific order always means this particular thing. It It's just three words and the way, the context in which they're deployed is nudging you towards thinking about a character as a person. But as an overall phrase, it's not an English language idiom or idiomatic usage in any particular way. And I think that's the difference. So I have two more that I think comport from the same puzzle that I think comport to the same distinction. We have networking group with a question mark, and that led to the answer IT support. Again, I think in this case, networking group, that's very much a phrase deriving from, you know, I would say probably originally U.S. business culture, networking group. You go to a networking group um, event or you have a networking group for your career or something like that. And it's very much a a, a phrase unto itself. It's a, it's an idiomatic Eng- English language phrase that has a very particular meaning and you have to think beyond that meaning. You really have to go out of your way to think past it in order to get to the answer. Um, and hence it has that question mark. The, the wordplay is being, is being clued there. But there's another one from the same puzzle without a question mark. One way to reach a distant star, fan letter. Um, and this didn't have a question mark. There was no question mark on one way to reach a distant star. And again, that's because one way to reach a distant star is not really in itself a, a kind of idiomatic English phrase that you need to invert or subvert in some way to find the proper answer. It's just a sentence fragment that alludes to sort of interstellar travel. Um, it suggests that that's what's going on. And so y- you're predisposed to think about it that way. Um, but the, the answer fan letter, which refers to reaching a distant celebrity in that sense, you do, it, it, it doesn't, you don't need to really change an idiomatic English usage in order to get there. It's just, you just have to think about star in a different context that you weren't thinking about before. Now you could argue that these are all that, that way in a certain sense. I mean, you have to think about networking in a computer technology sense rather than a social sense. And that's true. But I do think there's a difference between networking group, which is a very sort of strongly defined phrase. Those those words are linked together in that phrase um, when combined in that way. And one way to reach a distant star, which is a more diffuse, just sort of ordinary usage of language. Um, And that's, that's, I think, the distinction between what is clued with a question mark and what's not. Now, beyond that, I would say, I think, the further you get into the week, the less likely you are to get the question mark assistance. So part of it, I think, is difficulty tuning. But once we get to the difficult days, like Friday and Saturday, I think this is what sort of divides them. I hope that made sense. If if it didn't, do let me know in a comment, and um, maybe I can try and and I don't know refine or re- restate this in a in a in a useful way. Um, but that that's my understanding of what it means. The question mark is uh, paired with. Uh, sort of defined idiomatic English language usage. And when it's just a combination of words that pushes you in a certain misdirection, uh, but isn't itself a a sort of self-contained idiomatic phrase, the question mark is less required. So anyway, there we have it. Uh, That went longer than I expected. I probably should have predicted that. Let's get on to today's crossword. This is a themeless puzzle by Carter Cobb. This is Carter Cobb's uh, second, I think, crossword for the New York Times. And it was edited, as always, by Will Short. So let's get right onto it. Let's start solving. Oh my goodness, this is going to be a difficult puzzle too, I think. Look at these long, look at this enormous open grid here. Wow. I feel almost blinded by the the, the bright white of this grid. Okay. Terrible twos. um, I don't know, dynamic duos or something like that. I don't think that's going to be the answer. But uh, much viewed showdown of 1974. Oh, is this is this going to be the rumble in the jungle or something like that? One of Muhammad Ali's fights is that doesn't fit. Um, classic Jonathan Swift satire. I think the one that comes to mind for me is a modest proposal, which is yes, that does fit. Uh, a modest proposal. It was. A satirical, 
a, a satirical suggestion by Jonathan Swift that he outlined in an essay uh, to uh, mitigate the effects of famine by eating children, basically. And it was, you know, I think, I should say, presumably, obviously, uh, a, an, an outrageous and satirical proposal. But um, I guess, as you'd expect, and I suppose this would probably still happen now, uh, it was taken by some, uh, literally, uh, with outrage. Anyway, voting rights activist Abrams, Stacey Abrams is a U.S. political activist. So there we go. Is that Stacey or Stacey? I'm not sure. Um, let's see. Terrible twos. I don't know what that one's getting at. Amount of resistance. Well, an ohm is the, I think, is the kind of standard unit of resistance, which would fit in the beginning here. Is there, maybe there's another unit of, I'm sure there is another unit of resistance with which I'm less familiar. Certain movement supporters. Probably ends in an S. Cries after and grand and Grand Gold de Football, Olays. You can tell my Spanish pronunciation is just absolutely worthless. <laughs> Started pronouncing it like French because I'm so accustomed to that. Um, anyway, uh, certain movements, or is this Portuguese or is it Portuguese or Spanish? I don't even know. That's embarrassing. Certain movement supporters are, yeah, I don't know, but Olays anyway would be the cries here. Organization for the New England Revolution. Is this MLS, speaking of football, Major League Soccer? That would be my guess. Uh, much viewed. Oh, it's not the Rumble in the Jungle. It's the Thrilla in Manila. Yes, another one of those well-named fights. Okay, I think that must be the answer. They go into outlets. Prongs of a... That that makes sense. Prongs of a, um, you know, a, a, a plug for an electrical device. You know, this, I want, I want this to start with ohm. Amount of resistance. Does it? Is there any way that's true? Terrible twos. Oh, sophomore slumps. Yes, that's, um, this is a phenomenon associated, I think, with, you know, artists or musicians who release their second work, their second album, say, and it's often thought to be a particularly difficult release because it's coming, if they had a successful first release, it's it has to live up to that and they don't yet have enough of a, you know, the body of work is so small that it's just being compared to this first thing that brought them to fame. Uh, I think that, I think that's what that is. Certain movement supporters, canes, as in a walking stick maybe, and prepares for a surprise party, hides if you're surprising somebody. If you're the one doing the surprising grocery list, listing eggs, maybe simple enough. Amount of resistance. What on earth is this? So this looks like Stacy with an E Y at the end. Happy expl exclamation. Yes. Oh, oh, homage. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. So an ohm is an individual sort of unit of resistance. And then you could say, the sort of total amount of resistance is the homage measured in ohms, which I guess could be one ohm, but could also be any other number. Okay, there we go. Great. Like some non-dairy milks, oat-based maybe? Yes. Tear apart, rip in two, rip asunder, rip apart, rip... Hmm. No, oh, no, it won't be apart because that's in the clue. I don't know. Register looks like enroll. Uh, participate in a joint session would be smoke. So smoke a joint. There we go. And here's a here's a question mark. And this I think comports with what I was saying before. Joint session is very much a um, specific idiomatic phrase. Okay, takes off with it. Books it maybe. Toddlers twenty six down sometimes, and twenty six down says C eleven down. So, right, that doesn't give me anything. Uh, toddlers something are their laps. Toddlers plates or dishes or something, maybe? If they mean, I don't know, if a toddler's or table. Yes, if a toddler's playing with things on their lap, they're using it as a table. I don't know if that's actually the answer. Let's check the cross. Crosses here. Nation that moved east of the international dateline 
1892 and west of it in 2011. Wow. That's interesting. I don't think I'm certain enough about this to keep table in there. Um, that's very fascinating. Don't worry about us. We're okay. It allows the swimmer to float more easily. Salt Lake. I mean, high salt content does allow a swimmer to float more easily. Um, the 1619 Project, for short, that was a New York Times um, series. Uh, recreation area. Play... Play what? Calls incorrectly. Misnames. Oh, you call somebody by the incorrect name. You misname them. Call them incorrectly. That's clever. Because calls incorrectly. And, th and this is actually sort of an example where, yeah, we don't have the question mark. Because you could say, oh, well, this sounds like makes a call in a, in a sport or something incorrectly. But calls incorrectly as a phrase in itself isn't, isn't a kind of self-contained idiomatic phrase. So no question mark, even though there's a bit of punnery going on, you could argue. Mathematician Weierstrass dubbed the father of modern an analysis. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. Recreation area. Play, oh, playroom, maybe. So children's recreation, perhaps. And does that help? I'm not, I don't know. I don't know that I know this name. Um, maybe this is Salt Lake. This could be Carl, Carl Weierstrass. I don't know. Vehicles in it. Oh, maybe with a K because vehicles in, in a Nintendo racing game could be carts as in the game Mario Kart. And this looks like Samoa. Okay. I was wondering if it might be Samoa, um, just based on the, just based on its location and the length of the, the answer. C11 down. Toddlers, what's are their laps? Toddler, oh, seats? Oh, somebody else's lap, right. A toddler's seat could be maybe a parent's lap. There we go. Okay, remark while browsing an old photo album, or guilty as charged. That's me, you could say. And beat in a bake-off, question mark. So this is being expressly clued as wordplay here. What is that? Hmm. Debt notes. What about this? Tear apart. Rip. <laughs> Why can I not see what this is? Rip over? Rip. Oh. What a helicopter might fly out of. Question Again, question mark here. What a helicopter might fly out of. Out of control or something like that? I wonder if it means fly out of. I don't know. Home of Switzerland's oldest university. Well, just based on Switzerland and the crosses, I'm guessing it's Basel. Rip. Tear apart. I, it's shocking to me that this isn't more evident, <laughs> but I don't know. Non-dominant personalities. Betas as in sort of alpha beta personality types, maybe. And neutral pH could be so seven because it's higher or lower than seven, right? Is the sort of neutral point for pH or the fulcrum point. Okay, oh, rip open, is that what it is? Tear apart, rip open? I guess, yeah, I suppose if you, if you, if that works in the case of something like packaging, if you tear apart packaging, you're ripping open the parcel. I guess that makes sense. What a helicopter might fly out of. Maple? What else fits here? Is something wrong? Rip. I don't know. I don't see what's happening here. Buff is, buff could be a buff, a fan of something, a film buff, a film fan, or it could be um, to buff, to polish something, or it could mean to buff up, to sort of learn about something, um, or in the buff, you're nude. I don't see anything that works there alone. Obviously something does. Quarreled probably ends with an ed. And things placed in vases are, I don't know, flowers or what? 
Author Susan, who Meryl Streep portrayed in adaptation. Meryl Streep portrayed the author Susan Orlean, the author of The Orchid Thief, Thief, Orchid Thief in adaptation. So what is this? Buff Haven? Why is that is that true? Hapel? That doesn't make any sense. Maven, a buff, a maven, someone who's knowledgeable about something. That works. Why is this maple? What a helicopter may fly out of. Do maple trees have those um, little sort of helicopter um, what, I don't even know what you call them, the things that drop from trees and spin around? I, 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 are they called helicopters? I didn't know that. If so, this must be the answer. I can't think what else this would be. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think that must be it. Okay, and this is a case where I actually don't know that my rule necessarily applies to this. I think it's more that you have to reach so far to understand what this is getting at that that the question mark is being given as a just as some as some help because it would be so strange otherwise. I think if you said what a helicopter might fly out of and you saw maple and there were no question mark there, I think I would certainly be completely flabbergasted by that. Um, so I think in some cases the question mark is just. It's it's there even if it may be according to the rule that I stated, which may not be the rule used by the New York Times. It was just my interpretation of what I'm seeing. But anyway, uh, even even aside from that, I think this might just be necessary to to, to make this <laughs> parse. Uh, all right, quarreled, disputed. No, no, that doesn't fit. Uh, things placed in vases, right? I don't know. Probably ends with an S. College level course for high school coders. AP computer science, I suppose. So individually in a way. Individually in a way. All, hmm, not sure. Likes much 1960s activism. Sure it'll be obvious when we have more clues, but I'm just not sure offhand. One traveling by daylight, question mark. I'm just not sure about that either. All right, we'll have to find another way into these the, that area of the grid. Debt notes, fertile mixtures, loams maybe? Fertile soil? Things placed in vases are stems of flowers. There we go. Quarreled uh, something individually in a way. The in a way is in itself almost a slight nod towards... Uh, it could be a nod towards sort of wordplay or misdirection, but it could also just be that this is an example of that thing or something that could go along with the thing being clued. Uh, but I don't know. I still don't know the answer. Silk blank hairstyling method. Not sure. Abbreviation in a car and driver review. Could be something like miles per hour or revolutions per minute or um, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of abbreviations that are automotive in nature. Uh, but I don't know what in a car and driver review in particular I would expect to be there. Maybe miles per gallon, fuel economy, seems like the kind of thing you'd want to know in a review. Highlighters and such. Markers, doesn't fit. Um, Corrine Jean Blank, White House media person beginning of 2022. I don't think I'm going to know this. Um, inflates the ego of with up. Maybe hypes up. No, that doesn't work. Uh, gooses up. I uh, could be. That's a bit of an odd way to say it, but I don't know. I'm not confident about that. Let's check the crosses because I, I was. I was the reason I was thinking that is because of miles per gallon. Uh, mother of Cronus and Rhea. Cronus and Rhea. That's going way back. I would have assumed Gaia or something for this. So maybe not. Oh, gas is up. You could gas someone up. There we go. Okay. All right. So there we go. I was just thinking because Cronus and Rhea are really sort of early gods um, in the Greek mythology. I mean, uh, let's see. Does this work? Is it guy with an I? I don't remember. I want it to be an E, but I'm not sure. Highlighters and such. TV medical reporter Sanjay. Oh, Sanjay Gupta. How do I know that? I don't know, but somehow I think I do. Some salad veggies, cukes, cucumbers, 
and veggies being a sort of a shortened form of shortened casual form of vegetables. So that that's a little bit of a cute clue as well. Uh, a little bit of a cue as well. Highlighters and such are makeup. Ah, right. Okay. So that's always a tricky thing when you get something that looks like a plural, but then the noun is either a plural that doesn't end with S or it's a sort of collective term like makeup where you wouldn't, you wouldn't put an, N, an S on the end of that to say makeups uh, sort of refer to a different thing. Okay. Extremely hot peppers named for their scythe-like tails. I don't know. This is an interesting ending with this P-E here. What would that be? Yeah, not sure. It'll probably be obvious in retrospect. Hybrid video game genre. Um, hybrid video game genre. I'm not sure. And cassette, forerunners, something tapes. Eight track tapes or something like that. That could be it. Blank hurt. Can't hurt, you could say. That's a phrase. Uh, Janko Korean cuisine. Ooh, don't think I know this. Uh, hybrid video game genre. Oh, something adventure. Action, action adventure. There we go. There we go. Okay. That N was, was what I needed there. Whoa. My light flickered. Uh, Kareen Jean Peter, I don't know. I don't know what this is. This doesn't look so rude. This is, is this not 8-track tapes? Maybe it's not. Reel-to-reel -reel tapes? That makes sense because a cassette is sort of, it's almost like a little reel-to-reel -reel tape inside of a, a, a casing because it's got it, it does, in fact, have two reels, two little spools that uh, the tape runs from one to the other. So that makes sense. Okay. One traveling by daylight. A solar car. Oh, right. Okay. There we go. And we got the question mark on that. Like much 1960s activism. Um, oh, I don't know why I can't see it. Individually, in a way. Quarreled. Spatted? You had a spat? I don't usually think of that as becoming its own verb in the sense of we're spatting. But I'm sure that's in the dictionary. Okay. Individually, in a way. A la carte, as in on a menu. You could have an a la carte menu you order individually rather than a set meal. Okay. Men's ray. Uh, this is a legal. This is legal terminology, and I think I've misremembered exactly what it means in the past. Uh, something like being present in the courtroom. I think it's something something similar to that. Likes much 1960s activism. Oh, pro peace. I see. Okay, yes, the peace movement. There we go. Okay, extremely hot peppers named for their scythe-like tails. So what is the scythe-like thing that we are referring to here? Hmm, I just don't know. Blank stick, frequent Jean-Michel Basquiat medium. Oil stick. Scheme could be a plot. Fabric whose name may derive from its country of origin. Hmm, not sure. Two-dimensional. It could be two-dimensional um, referring to mathematics or geometry, or it could be two-dimensional referring to, you know, two-dimensional character or something. So not, not quite a fully drawn character in fiction, but I'm not sure which. Intense movement is... I wonder, I mean, is there any chance it's an intense movement in a sort of musical symphony or sonata or something like that? That would be probably something like Presto or Allegro or Scherzo or something. It wouldn't end, I don't think it would end in D, and maybe not. So maybe it is just an intense movement. What is that? Something, some sort of ride? I don't know. 
so rude. The nerve, you could say, with irritated, in an irritated manner. Dent notes, chits, right, okay. Yes, a chit is is often used to refer to uh, a kind of debt marker. Okay, beat in a bake-off, question mark. Bake-off, what, is, what does this mean that isn't a bake-off meaning in a cookery sense? What is, what other way could we interpret these words? Beat. Maybe it's beat. A oh, whisk it is. Yes, okay. I was thinking about bake-off being the punny thing, but it wasn't. It was beat. So bake-off is being used in the same sense. You're you're you know, baking cakes and things in competition, and then you're beating, for instance, eggs. You're whisking them. All right, there we go. Silk blank hairstyling method. Silk tress? I don't I don't know. Dress. Intense movement. Crusade? Charade? I don't know. Bad sound from an engine. A clank, maybe? That would be a sort of generically bad sound to hear from an engine. Oh, Chino? Fabric whose name may drive from its country of origin? What? What country would that be? China? Does it Gradually eliminate, yeah, phase out, gradually eliminate without, phase out, okay. Um, oh, Carolina Reapers, okay, I don't think I'm familiar with this pepper name. Extremely hot pepper's name for the scythe-like tail, so the Reaper is the is the scythe-like tail. There we go. So that must, did that fill anything out? Oh, oh, this must be Pierre. Okay, it was Gaia with an I, sorry, I, mis, I, I misremembered that name spelling, or at least how it's transliterated into our alphabet. Okay. Uh, Karine Jean-Pierre, I suppose, is the White House media person. And then, yeah, oh, no, we had that already. Okay, I think everything. Oh, no, we didn't have this. Jankyon Cuisine, Korean Cuisine is eel. Okay, fair enough. I didn't know that. Intense movement is... What? What is it? This looks like planar. Yes, two-dimensional is planar. And then silk press... Oh, it is crusade. Oh, that's funny. Intense. Why is intense movement a crusade? I suppose an intense military movement. Oh, oh, I see. No, it's a movement in the sense of a of a sort of activist movement. You could describe it as a as a crusade. You know, moral crusade and that kind of thing. Okay, fine, great. So clunk is the bad sound from an engine. That's that works fine. And there we go. So I think I probably found that less challenging than yesterday's puzzle. Um, hard to say, but may maybe, a, I don't know, maybe about the same. Yesterday's puzzle was made easier by how much I was <laughs> constantly looking for wordplay and punning. So um, that probably makes it a bit more difficult to compare these two. Anyway, there we have it. That was the Saturday crossword I am going to... Um, uh, probably wrap this video up because I, I took all that time at the beginning to do that explanation. But this was a tough one, I think. Let me know how you fared in the uh, Discord server or the um, comments on the video. I am always curious to know. We had these big, long answers. These are interesting because sometimes they can make the puzzle much, much easier. If you instantly get something like Thrilla in Manila or A Modest Proposal um, it, or Cal Cal Carolina Reapers, probably, I'm sure there were people who knew that right off the bat. Uh, that can be a huge help, obviously, because it, it spans the entire grid. But if you just happen to clue what it is, then uh, it can really, uh, it can be dragged out until you have so many crosses that it becomes a foregone conclusion. Anyway, let me know how you managed with this one. And that's that for today's puzzle and today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow for the Sunday edition of the New York Times crossword, which is a much larger grid. It should be an easier puzzle, though, than this weekend's puzzles to date. So look forward to that. Uh, until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. Uh -huh.